Hey, it's Megan. Welcome back to another Dollar Tree DIY video. These are my all time favorite spring DIYs that I'm using year to year. Dollar Tree DIYs that don't look Dollar Tree. I did not put these in any particular order of best to worst or whatever. Just know I love them. I think you're gonna dig them just the same. For the first one, all you need is one of these shadow boxes from the Dollar Tree. The little center circle part pops right out and then just pick your favorite brown. I'm using melted chocolate and paint all over your frame. Now, back when I did this DIY last year, I didn't realize that the middle of the frame pops out so easily. So I would suggest removing the back of the frame, painting it white and then hot gluing it back together. You'll get a more finished look. Then some of Dollar Tree's wood look contact paper. Put it on your circle, but do not worry about getting it perfect, I promise you. The easiest way to get a clean cut with contact paper or scrap paper anything is to use sandpaper, swipe away from whatever you're doing, it comes out perfect. Then Dollar Tree sells these two little carrots. Actually, they come in a four pack. I just used two of them, hot glued them to the circle and voila, there you go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, cute little tray decor, little side decor for spring. Next, just one of these egg packs from the Dollar Tree. You get 12 little eggs, pull the strings out, cut those bad boys in half, which is super easy to do. I mean, they're just made out of foam. I used a kitchen knife. Then one of the green foam wreaths, also from the Dollar Tree, and just hot glue your eggs all over the wreath. I don't prefer to do a pattern. I like more of a cattywampus, wild and whimsical wreath, but that's totally personal preference. Then go back with some Dollar Tree moss and fill in the gaps. This way, we have only used like $3 so far. Now, last year I did a DIY where I used this sign with the bunny, I'd ripped the bunny off and I had originally hot glued the bunny to the wreath with a burlap bow. And I was on the fence about, should I keep the bunny, should I not? I took the bunny off last year, but this year I decided I wanted more of a neutral look. So I went back with some chalk paint and painted the eggs. Now, if you're gonna do this, like from the get go, you would wanna paint your eggs before you ever added the moss. And then using brown oxide, just like I did on my last DIY for spring to make speckled eggs, exact same technique, threw a paintbrush, mixed with water at the eggs to give it a speckled look. And I love the way this turned out. I do think it would look a little bit more polished if I would have painted the eggs from the start, but still, I love the way this looks, muted pastels. And we're on to number three, where all you need is one of Dollar Tree's huge, large plastic eggs. Fill it with something heavy, I just used some rocks. I think these are actually from the Dollar Tree. And then wrap duct tape all around your egg. For two reasons, one, you wanna keep the egg closed, but two, we are using hot glue and Dollar Tree's rope to wrap it around the eggs. Hot glue doesn't really stick to plastic very well, but duct tape does and hot glue will stick to duct tape really well. And you don't wrap the whole egg, so you wrap the top, the middle, and the bottom. So this is what we got. You spray paint it. I used Walmart's 98 cent spray paint. And then you go back and wrap the in-between sections. And by the way, you don't have to use like hot glue the entire time, pretty much the beginning and the end. So this is what it looks like, super cute as is. I decided to go a step further and use some Dollar Tree lace to put it around like where the lines meet. Absolutely love the way this egg turned out. Then they also carry a smaller egg from Dollar Tree. Did the same thing, put duct tape around it. I didn't add rocks this time because it was smaller, didn't really need it. And I used some of the burlap ribbon and some of the twine. So for the twine starting out, you had to like pull it tight because the egg is not a flat surface to kind of pull the ribbon tight, wrapped it all the way around. I didn't try to do it perfect. And then did the same thing on the bottom. Took a little bit more twine, wrap it around the middle. And I originally added a bow, but hey, I'm on the fence about the bow. So you need to let me know. Yay bow, no bow, let me know. And then I did seal it with Mod Podge only because I wasn't like 100% confident that the twine would not come unraveled with just the hot glue. Cause I didn't hot glue every line. And this is what these eggs look like. Adore these. If I had to put these in order, which by the way, top 10, totally not in order. These would definitely be like number one, number two, maybe love the way these look totally neutral, totally cute, and definitely keeping these for years to come. And we're on to number four. So one of Dollar Tree's plain mats and this truck printable, I do have it linked for free 
for you to use and download in the description. Cut out your truck and then like tape your truck together and then cut it out piece by piece. Do you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Are you still with me? I think I'm explaining this good and okay. Then just regular old tape and tape your truck to your rug. Now optional, I extended the bed with some tape, but you don't have to do that. Then any tape you have on hand, like electric tape or washi tape, like thinner, stretchy tape, you can write out whatever you wanna write. I wrote hello and it does not have to be perfect. You could totally omit the step if you want it to. I mean, like, when you're doing the cursive, it kind of makes it easy and then you can just cut off the extra pieces. Then I did the most childish and primitive, like sketching of flowers, did not try to do them the same on Dollar Tree's contact paper and then set them on the rug. Do you see what I'm saying? Then just some ocean mist, Rust-Oleum spray paint, had this on hand, any spray paint will work, spray all over your rug. And when you're done and you pull off the paper and stickers, don't freak out because see, it's not perfect. It did not match up. I had puff paint on hand, but you could use acrylic paint. Although if you do have puff paint, totally suggest using puff paint. It is besides spray paint, the easiest way to paint a rug and paint it all over my truck. I just used orange, tried to do fresh, bright, springy colors. Same thing for the hello. Then I went back with the black and this really made me fall in love with this rug. This is what totally nailed it for me and outlined the flowers and the truck and everything else. And by the way, you could do that with a Sharpie. Last summer, Dollar Tree sold this Never Wet, which was a great deal from Rust-Oleum. I just followed the directions, sealed it, sprayed it. This cute rug has held up wonderfully and I love the way it looks. In fact, I made one for somebody else and they paid me like $20, which is mind blowing. And we are on to the next one where I just took some scrap popcorn box, drew a bunny and then traced the same bunny out two more times. Cut that bunny out and then just using some hot glue and moss, attach your moss to your bunny. After you're finished, flip it over and like cut away the excess moss, cut out your bunny again pretty much and you repeat that three times. Then a regular old cotton ball from Dollar Tree a little bit of hot glue, rolled it into a ball, and I made a bunny tail. So one cotton ball will make three bunny tails. Then I used this frame I got from a thrift store for less than a dollar, had it forever, but you could totally use one of Dollar Tree's frames. And I'm using this rustic farmhouse floral chicken wire from my Walmart, which no one else can find, and I feel so bad about that, but just know you can also use one of Dollar Tree's wire baskets, same thing. At this point in time, I did not have a staple gun, so I just hot glued the chicken wire down. It worked fine, twisted it back so no one is poking themselves. And then I taped the bunnies to the chicken wire and distressed my frame. I used tape because I want this to be something I could use throughout the seasons, not just for spring. And then to hang it, I just used some Dollar Tree rope. Here we go, super freaking cute in my personal 100% biased opinion, <laughs> spring decor. And I love that I've been able to change this out like throughout the seasons. Number six, for Christmas, Valentine's Day and Easter, Dollar Tree sells these little containers. The lid has a scallop top, which is super cute. Just take that lid, trace it out on some scrap cardboard or some foam and then cut that out. Hot glue that to the lid because this plastic is very flimsy, trust me, you're gonna want the extra support. And then add some more hot glue. Then one of Dollar Tree's candle holders, hot glue that to the middle, and then I reinforced more hot glue because I've kept this and I continue to use this throughout different seasons. Then apply some Mod Podge because we're going to be painting this. Anytime you paint plastic or something that paint scrapes off really easily, use Mod Podge. Then just white spray paint from Walmart, less than a dollar, I spray painted it twice. Then went back with some black paint and just barely painted it on the edges, used my finger to rub it in to distress it. But that's totally a personal preference, like two out of three of my inspirations had the distressing. So you could totally leave it like stark white if you wanted to. Hey, you do you, whatever you wanna do, it'll look great either way. Then one of Dollar Tree's little ceramic birds, which is, Super cute, just a little bit more modern than my decor, and some Dollar Tree's decorative napkins. I bought these napkins like a long time ago for another DIY, I just had them laying around, so I wanted to use it up. 
Mod Podge just using the lettering part because we, you know, we cut away the butterflies or you could leave the butterflies and painted it onto the bird. And I totally get this DIY is not for everyone. So this is what the first layer looked like. And then I went back into the second layer, just focusing on the wording to kind of give it, I don't know, a faded look. I really love doing stuff like this. Very therapeutic to me. Super cute. Just took some Dollar Tree moss, some little Dollar Tree eggs I painted and speckled and put it on the tray. And I think this is totally adorable. Once again, this is me, totally biased, but I love it. <laughs> Then any scrap fabric, I'm using burlap and an old coffee can. If you can't find one, ask a neighbor or friend. Make sure your fabric fits the can totally. Hot glue it, but do not hot glue the sides together all the way up on the top. So like leave an inch unglued at the top. And you'll see why here in a second. And then just hot glue the bottom together too. Take some Dollar Tree floral moss, push it into the can, like pack it tight. Then just take some black spray paint spray paint it and it will look just like soil. So see what I'm saying here? For real, this is like Marshall sells this stuff. Glue the ends together on the bottom and then fold the top over like where we didn't hot glue to begin with and then glue that together. So this is what we have. Then all you gotta do is take some ribbon or some twine or totally omit this stuff, but I do think you should use some type of tie, even use some scrap burlap if you need to and one, only, you only need one of Dollar Tree's picks. I'm using the frosted picks they carry every year. I love the way these look. I just pulled off the yellow. It was a little bit too much yellow for me, but personal preference, and then just cut the stems off. And you just stick them, like literally stab them right into the floral foam. And this will look like a legit plant. I mean, if plants were frosted like this, but you can do this with any type of florals or any type of vase or pot to make a fake plant look real. And I, seriously, it looks real. Like, you know, the ones you buy at Marshall's or TJ Maxx or World Market, um, it's a realistic looking fake. Just trust me, try it out, I promise you, my friend. And we're on to number eight, where you just need one of these bunny signs. We're just using the bunny for this one and the other pieces can be repurposed for something else. Some more moss, but hey, cut your moss up. Just trust me on this, it'll go a lot further if you cut it up into little chunks. And hot glue all over your bunny moss all over your bunny and then trim away anything hanging over kind of like we did with the first bunnies you're going to repeat all of that on the other side so you're mossing up both bunny sides then just one of dollar trees little dowel rods wooden dowel rods hot glue right in the middle of the belly of the bunny and one of dollar trees larger little pots it comes in a two pack smash your floral foam down in there, no hot glue needed, and then smash your bunny in there, stab your bunny in there, and then you can add moss, brown or green, totally your choice. I like to do brown moss. I know some people like to keep green on grain, but hey, total preference. And this is just a cute, super inexpensive DIY where this applies, you'll have like multiple stuff left over, like the moss and the pots and all the dowel rods and stuff. Now we're just using one of Dollar Tree's larger wreath forms and these 97 cent lavender picks from Walmart, only two. Just know they are like very flowered up and it looks like you're gonna be like frying chicken in your craft room. And then just one of the 97 cent lavender picks, which are also frosted, but like not floured up, fried chicken looking frosted like the lavender is. Stick it in your wreath and there's no need to hot glue any of this. Then go back and stick in your lamb's ear leaves. And I did hot glue the lamb's ear. So this is what we have so far, super cute. You could stop here, but I had some scrap Dollar Tree florals left laying around. And so I hot glued those flowers in just to give it an extra pop of cuteness and make it look more springy. And I do say this about all of my wreaths, but I really do promise this has been one of my favorite wreaths to date. And I did go back and actually add more flowers to make it more voluptuous and beautiful. And that's just my opinion. I love wreaths. Now, when I originally did the last DIY, so we're on number 10, y'all. Congratulations for making it. I thought I would need three lavender picks and two lamb's ear, but I only need two lavender and one lamb's ear. So just taking a Dollar Tree vase, painting it a white, stuck my leftover lavender and lamb's ear in here and voila there you go it doesn't always have to be complicated hey thank you so much for watching my friend i will catch you next time